Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is December 26th, 2022. And let's get over the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So, first things first, um, good news coming out of Kremina. So, the Ukrainians have officially liberated the towns of Chernovo, Popivka, and Dibrova, which are settlements just outside of Kremina. Previously, I did report on that, but it wasn't really confirmed. But now we have confirmation that this is the case bring the Ukrainian forces closer to Kremina. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, um, perhaps even days, the Ukrainians are going to liberate this uh, this massive town. And you can see that the Russians are phased, um, are facing, I should say, uh, a dilemma here. Should they just retreat behind the river where Kremina is, uh, or should they continue to defend this town? It's becoming more and more dangerous for them to stay here because the Ukrainians are getting very, very close to the city. And um, I'm expecting them to withdraw. If, you know, history has taught us anything is that nobody wants to be in the position of encirclement. And the reason why this is extremely important is that Kremina, and here I'm bringing your railway line uh, map, is obviously has a connection. There is a connection with the railway system through the city of Kremina all the way up to Svatove. This is extremely important. And if Kremina falls, the Russians lose another massive uh, railway connection to which they can use to feed and uh, supply the town of Svatove, and including the entire uh, defense system that they've set up uh, through the uh, highway here that feeds between Svatove and Kremina. So losing Kremina would another, be another blow for the Russian defense here. So this is why it's really ex extremely important for the Russians to hold this town. But if they're already almost surrounded uh, from both sides here, this is extremely, extremely dangerous for them. And this railway system, as you can see here, feeds into Rubizhne, into Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. There's multiple connections here. This is the main reason why Russians, um, it's their lifeline. The railway system is their lifeline. They operate with the railway system. This is how they get efficient uh, ammunition and supplies delivered to the front lines. Um, so, of course, the, the all other alternative is the, ra the road system, but that takes more time. It takes more, um, you know, trucks, and they can't push as many supplies with trucks. So obviously this is a huge loss for them if they're gonna lose Kremina. And also one thing I've never really reported on, but I think it's really important to discuss why the Russians are trying to take Bakhmut. You can see on this map, it's Artemivsk, which is the old name for Bakhmut. It was changed by the Ukrainian government to Bakhmut. But um, the Russians want to take Bakhmut because the Ukrainians in holding Bakhmut have fire control over an extremely important connection, which is in the Baltseve, right here. You can see that the Baltseve has a very, very important connection with multiple uh, railway systems um, that feed into different settlements in the uh, in Luhansk and Donetsk. And they feed into Donetsk city, they feed into Luhansk city, uh, Pervo, uh, Pervalsk, um, and different, different settlements that the Russians uh, control right now. And so by... Um, the very fact that the Ukrainians hold Bakhmut and have fire control with the HIMARS systems and other artillery systems uh, over the Baltseve, it makes their life very, very complicated um, to really support the entire front line here, as we see uh, the entire access from Svatove all the way up to Donetsk city right here. So this is why the Russians are giving it all in Bakhmut. But there have, they have zero um, chance in taking Bakhmut, and that was supported through the latest Institute of War assessment that the Russians have a strategic loss. They've really, really hoped that they would be able by this year to take Bakhmut, but nothing worked out. As we've seen, the killing fields here um, for the Russian army have been just, they've been decimated. There's hundreds and thousands of, you know, Wagner and Russian soldiers just laying dead all across this buffer zone here, the no, man, no man's land, because they were just not capable of achieving any type of victory. So overall, this is great news. Hopefully the Ukraine forces are going to be able to cut off and take Kremina, cut off the Russian forces here, and they'll be able to uh, essentially take Svatove shortly after. So that's it for the map updates. 
Um, the other news I want to talk about is that Angles Air Base was hit again by the Ukraine uh, armed forces uh, through drones, most likely. And the Russians report that they destroyed this drone, but however, the fragments of this drone of this drone uh, killed three Russian servicemen. We all know it's it's obviously a lie. I believe that the Russian uh, the Ukrainian drone did meet its target, and I have video proof. There's so many videos that came out uh, today from uh, Saratov showing that indeed the Ukrainian drone did hit the airbase, and. Uh, Again, it just shows again that the Russians are just not able to efficiently protect their skies and that they didn't come to the conclusion following the early December attack three weeks ago, the same attack by the Ukrainian forces, that they didn't come to a conclusion that perhaps they should have they should strengthen their air base and that an old Soviet era uh, drone easily could target their air base like that. So... Let's not forget, Engels is extremely important for the Russians. It ha houses the Tupolev 95 uh, air bombers, among other um, jet fighters. And the fact that the Ukrainian forces were able to strike it so easily shows how um, they're just incapable of, of really defending their skies. And um, even the people now don't believe the Russian media saying that, oh, yeah, we successfully struck and... Um, you know, destroy the this Ukrainian uh, drone, and the Russians here on the Telegram channels in Saratov are writing stuff like this again. Uh, you see that? Um, how is it that you know once isn't enough? We need to make conclusions out of this. This is one of the person that writes this. How how come the air defense system again failed uh, for seven hundred kilometers? Right. Um, we need to have pincer systems that, you know, regularly drive around the entire airbase that protects, you know, the airbase. So obviously the people don't believe the fact that they effectively struck this drone. And so they're starting to ask questions as to the effect effectiveness of the Russian army. So this is great news. Uh, obviously, it shows that even the Russians are fuming. And you can see even one here sa says that we need to strike Ukraine for once and for all, you know, essentially perhaps uh, pointing to nuclear weapons. But um, it shows as well that the Russians, um, at least the majority of the Russian people, don't care about the end of this war. All they want is the destruction of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian state, unfortunately. So I have two videos for you guys. So this is, first of all, the strike that happened in Angles Air Base. Let's take a look. Um, this is a camera that was obviously pointing towards the airbase. And you can see just how, oh my God, it looks like a meteorite hit the airbase. But the, the strike clearly is devastating. You can see that. Just the fact that it lit up the night sky like this is evidence enough that um, this was a big strike. This was a definitely a big strike. And last video is Bakhmut. There's no comments here. You can see the level of destruction that the Russians have committed to. Bakhmut will need to be completely rebuilt from the ground up following the end of this war. There's no denying. You can see the level of devastation in the city. And that's the Russian way, right? Pulverizing towns and cities and then just driving in because they just are incapable of doing urban warfare. But the Ukrainians are holding this city uh, until they'll be able to, um, un until it will make sense for them to hold the city, right? Because it's going to be pulverized to, to pieces. I don't see any point holding this down, but um, it's very important that the Ukrainian forces still hold this down until the very end. So, Unfortunately, you see this level of destruction that the Russians are bringing is is very telling. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoy my report today. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.